friends welcome back to my youtube channel today i'm really excited because i am going to be just sharing with you guys some of my absolute favorite hacks and tips shortcuts whatever you want to call them that i use on procreate just about every single day so i am an illustrator and graphic designer but my specialty my bread and butter is illustration i am not a i'm not an academically trained graphic designer by any means so that always comes second for me but i am primarily an illustrator which means i am working in procreate all the time hand drawing things illustrating things for whether it's for a book or marketing materials for one of my clients social media graphics all kinds of different things um, and so today I just want to show you kind of some of the uh, hacks and things that I use every single day to create these illustrations um, and if you have been at it with procreate for a while these are some tips that you may already know but if you are a beginner if you're still learning um, these are some tips that are going to save you a lot of time and a lot of energy um, and even if you've been using Procreate for a while, I'm hoping that maybe some of these things might be uh, maybe some new things that you can add to your toolkit. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've been working on a calendar design for the Indiana Peony Festival um, that I will have a booth at and I want to have some floral calendars at my booth to sell and I've been working on drawing um, just some floral arrangements for that. But my problem here is that I have a couple of different elements on the same layer that I really need to be able to separate because right now I've got this flower as well as some of this greenery all on the same layer. So anytime I try to move this, they're both getting moved around and I'd really just like to keep, I'd like to keep this greenery where it's at and just move this flower. So in order to do that, I'm just going to select the ribbon tool right here and I'm just going to draw a little circle around this flower that I'd like to separate onto a different layer. And then you're just going to take three, three fingers and you're going to slide up. And then that's going to bring you the option to cut, copy, copy all, duplicate, cut and paste, or paste. So I like to use the cut and paste feature. If I wanted to completely get rid of this flower, I could select it with the ribbon tool and then select cut. In this case, I do want to use this. I just want to be able to move it around. So I'm gonna select cut and paste. So now I have this single flower on its own layer, which means I can move this around anywhere I wanna take it. I just wanna be able to kind of put this in a different spot. And if you'd like to rotate your object, you can use this green little dot right here and you can rotate your object around that way. For some of these rotations, this is a little much for me. Like maybe I wanna rotate this, but not quite that far. That's when I'll use this yellow dot right here. It's more of like a square. And you can rotate that just slightly to the left. And now my flower is standing straight up. So you'll see that if you use the yellow instead of the green dot up top, that is really good for slight rotations. So I'm just going to uh, stick my flower in right here, but now I would like to make another one of these to put elsewhere, and I really don't want to redraw this flower. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna duplicate it. And the way that you can do that is either from this panel here, the layers, you can slide to the left and duplicate, or I can take this, do the three finger swipe, and press duplicate. And now I have more than one. One thing that I try to focus on when duplicating layers, if I have a lot to duplicate, if I wanna duplicate another flower, I'm gonna go back to the original layer and duplicate that because you'll see that as you duplicate things, if you look on your iPad on Procreate as you're doing this, they just lose a little bit of clarity, a little bit of sharpness with every time that the layer is duplicated. So if you need to duplicate something multiple times, I just always like to go back to the original layer and duplicate from that. So I've got all these different flowers here on a bunch of different layers and I just wanna move this to make sure it's completely centered. And if you don't know how to center something on Procreate, I'm gonna teach you how to do that too. I used to do what I used to do on Procreate for the longest time because I didn't realize that I could do something else was I would just combine layers one by one like this and it was 
like the biggest pain in the butt. Like it's just like a time suck. Like there's no reason to do it this way. It's actually a much more efficient way to combine layers. You can do it the way that I just did it, but it's not ideal. This is what I'm gonna do here. And this takes a fraction of the time to group a layer. It's just a simple slide to the right on all these layers that I want to combine. And then you can either delete all of them at once if you have multiple things that you need to delete, or you can select group. And now you have everything in one solid group. And I can move this around all together, all these different layers. Now, if I wanna make sure that this is centered, you're gonna to want to make sure that you have snapping um, turned on in your settings. So the way that you get to that is simply by highlighting the layer Go to snapping right here, which will be in the lower left hand corner. And you just want to make sure that the snapping toggle is turned on as well as magnetics. When I move this around, you're going to see some different grid lines are popping up. What I want to look for is the yellow grid line because the yellow grid line is going to show me that it's right in the center, just right in the middle which is exactly where I want it to be. If I want it to be directly in the center of the page, I want to take it down to where this yellow vertical line matches up with a horizontal uh, yellow line. And that would be directly in the center of the page. But I want to just put it up at the top here, but I just want to make sure it's in the center. So that's how you'll do that. Something else I want to show you for backgrounds, um, something that you can do to make kind of like a gradient background, which I've ended up using this quite often. Um, when I have been illustrating things like one of my clients is like a planner cover company, they're, they're a planner company and I design some of their covers. And so for some of those covers, we need like a gradient, um, in the cover. So I'm just going to show you how to get a gradient background because you may need that for something that you're creating, or maybe you have a client that needs something with a gradient background and you'll want to know how to do that. So I'm starting with just a light blush pink and it's gonna get a little bit darker, a little bit richer, and I'm literally just gonna move it along the color wheel. And now it's almost kind of, it's getting to a red color here. Okay, so nothing really special going on with this yet. You're going to hit this little button here. You're going to choose, I don't exactly know how to pronounce this. I don't know if it's Gaussian blur. I may be pronouncing that wrong, but that's what you're going to select. And then you're just going to drag your tool. You're going to drag your Apple Pencil as far as you want it to go. So if you want it to be really really blurred you'll want to take it to 100 percent sometimes i like for there to be you know a little bit of definition kind of between the layers but sometimes you need something that's just completely smooth all the way down um, so you can see you can just adjust that simply by moving your apple pencil back and forth thing else that i get asked about is how do you get the grid lines on your procreate screen so that you can you know use it to draw use it to write straight um how do you get that so the way that you're going to do that is simply pressing this icon in the upper left hand corner and you'll want to make sure you're on canvas there's different actions that you can select you want to make sure you're on canvas and then you'll just hit you'll toggle the drawing guide to on and then you can see that that brings up some grid lines for me if you want to change the color of the grid lines, you can go to Edit Drawing Guide. You can change the thickness of the grid lines. You can change the opacity of the grid lines. You can change the grid size. You can also turn on Assisted Drawing. If you want to draw something where you need uh, something to be symmetrical, Let's say you want to draw something on the other side and have it repeat over here. That's when you want to turn on the symmetry grid, which we did by going to edit drawing guide and selecting symmetry right here. And now as I draw things, it'll also appear on the other side. You can have a perfectly symmetrical drawing. 
I guess if you really wanted to, you could like divide your page in half basically and then copy and paste and like duplicate the layer and just do it that way. But this way is much easier. So if you don't know about this hack, now you know. And this is a really great way to just get a perfectly symmetrical design. You can also change the color of your grid lines. I like to have mine on black most of the time. Let's say you want to be able to draw a perfectly straight line. There are a couple ways that you can do this. One of the ways that you can do this is simply by drawing a line and then holding it down until it straightens. And you can move that line wherever you want, but I can draw a line, it's not very straight, but if I want it to be completely straight, you just have to hold it down and then you can release your pencil. Now, this is a straight line, but it's not necessarily going straight down, as you can see with the grid lines next to it. If you wanna make sure that this line is going completely straight down, let's say you wanna make a 90 degree angle and you wanna make sure that it's completely straight, the way that you wanna do this is turn on drawing assist. Now, if you wanna do drawing assist, you have to make sure that your drawing guide has been turned on at least once in your canvas. I don't know why that is the way that it is, but if you were to go to a new canvas and you hadn't turned on the drawing guide yet, you wouldn't be able to select drawing assist here. And the way that I brought up this menu is simply by just tapping on the layer and there's all these different things that you can do here. So you don't even have to have the drawing guide on to do this, you just need to make sure that it's been turned on at least one time so that you can take advantage of this feature. So drawing assist is on, which means I am now drawing completely straight up and down lines. And I can even, you know, move my pencil around however I want. I'm still getting a straight line. So with drawing assist, you're getting completely, completely straight. And I use this a lot if I know that I need to do a lot of like multiple, you know, straight lines all together. I will use this feature. Now, this is like a pretty basic, basic tip, but you may not, there is a chance that you may not know this, so I will share it. So if you want to use the color picker tool to select a color, let's say I I see this red here and I really want to use this exact red, but uh, maybe it's not under history right here. Right now it is, but if you, let's say you accidentally like cleared your history and you really want to use this exact red again, you can select this little circle right here um, on the left hand side and then move it over to where the color is and then now that is the color that is on your color wheel. So that is how you pick up any kind of color that you want to do. So this is an illustration that I recently did for a client and I'm going to show you how to use this blurring tool right here. Because when I first got my iPad, I was trying to figure out, you know, what are each of these things for? What, do, what all do they do? And this tool right here, I wasn't exactly sure what to do with it. So I've got this woman sitting on a couch and I'm just going to fill in some color here for the sake of this tutorial. I've got this woman sitting on a couch and now I've got this like really hard edge here. Just a really hard edge and I want to blur it out and make it softer. I'm going to select this tool right here. And you can change the size of the tool by sliding this little bar up and down. You can change the opacity of any of your brushes by sliding this bar up and down. But I'm going to take this little tool right here to smudge this. And you can see it starts to fade away the hard edge. And the size that you'll want for this is just going to depend on how much space you have to work with and how much you want to smudge it. And you can kind of draw it out a little bit simply by making strokes like this. And now this couch doesn't have a super hard edge, it's more blurred out. Sometimes I have a brush size that I want to use every single time I use a brush. 
and maybe it is to write text um, that I want to keep a certain brush size for. If you want to, I think this is a relatively new feature. Like I don't think that this was available a couple years ago. Um, but if you want to keep the same size of a brush or at least be able to go back to the same size, let's say you want to keep, you want to use the same brush for different things, but you want to be able to go back to the exact same size that you use to write something for the sake of consistency, you can move this bar up and down. And once you find the thickness that you like, the size that you like, you can just click on this bar and then click the plus sign. You look on the left hand side of this bar there's a little line that saves the spot that you were at before. So you can, you know, use this brush in different sizes, but then when you want to go back to this, you're able to save the brush size that you wanted to use. I'm going to make a couple of different canvases here. And let's say I'm starting new work for a client and I want to be able to group these canvases together so that I can have them all in one category, all in one little stack. All you have to do is slide this over and then you can stack it. And now all of them are, are in a stack. I can name my stack if I want. And then you have all of them right here, all in one organized little stack. Now, if you have a canvas that you want to reuse, you can duplicate it. So I just press the select tool, selected the canvas I want to duplicate and selected duplicate. You can select multiple at one time. You can duplicate, share them, preview them, delete them, whatever you'd like to do. I'm going to delete that whole stack. And it just says, are you sure? There we go. So if you want to fill an entire layer with color, you're just going to take this little color swatch up here, bring it down to the layer you want to fill. and. What I like to do is if there's little spots where color hasn't fully gotten filled in, you'll just slide your uh, your Apple Pencil to the right and wait until it says threshold 100%. If you only want to fill a little bit, you can see the more you slide it over to the left, the less that's being filled in. But most of the time, I want to slide all the way over to 100%. Now let's use this little smudging tool again because right now this is looking a little like out of place. So now I can kind of clean up some of these hard edges. So that's just kind of a little review of that. Let's say I'd really just like to change kind of the opacity of the background. Maybe it's just feeling a little bit too dark for me right now. I can change this of course by um, you know, maybe selecting a lighter color and maybe that will give me the desired effect. But something else that you can also do with your layers is you can select the N. On each layer, there's going to be a layer, you know, 11, or you can rename your layer. Um, and then there's going to be a little N and a checkbox here. Of course, if you don't want a layer to be showing, you can uncheck the box. But if you want to change the opacity of a layer, you select the little N there and just drag it to your desired opacity level. So now I've got it at 30% and that just creates a more soft, a more soft look. And again, if I want to soften up those edges anymore, I can use that smudging tool. And now it's very, very, very transparent looking. I want to draw something on her journal but only on her journal. Maybe I want to add like a stripe, but only on her journal. You can use the alpha lock tool simply by selecting your layer and selecting alpha lock. And then that makes it so that you will only color inside the lines of what you selected of the layer that you selected for alpha lock. So you can see I'm starting right here, but this will not actually bring color to my layer until I actually reach the layer that I selected, which is the journal. So that comes in handy a lot for moments that you only want to color inside the lines, basically. So as you guys can see, there are so many different things that you can do with Procreate. Like the possibilities are truly endless. And all you have to do is really just keep playing around with the app to see what the possibilities are, to see what else you can do. Um, there are so many other things I could show you. For example, if you want to change the brush that you're erasing with, 
You can control the tool and the brush that you're using to actually draw with, just like you can with your eraser as well. So again, there's just so many different things that I could show you. If you have any questions about you know certain things that you'd like to be able to do on Procreate, but you're not sure how to do them, please leave them in the comments below and I'd be happy to uh, film like a YouTube short or something to show you um, and answer any questions that you might have. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's YouTube video. I hope it was helpful for you. I know that when I first started with Procreate, I was looking at YouTube videos and tutorials like all the time trying to figure out how to use this app, but it truly is an amazing app. It has given me a career that I honestly didn't think I would ever have, um, and this is not sponsored in any way. I just procreate allowing me to digitally hand draw artwork has really just launched me into a career that honestly I don't think that it would be possible without it or without an app of this nature um, so it's just really opened up a lot of doors for me and I love sharing about it whenever I can so I hope you all enjoyed this video I hope it was helpful again if you have any questions let me know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more content from me I'm usually uploading videos weekly, um, sometimes twice a week if I get the chance, but most of the time at least once a week. So I will catch you all in the next video. Thank you again for joining me. appreciate you being here, and I will see you soon. Thanks, guys. Bye.